Hey, everybody. It is the Sharp Tongue Podcast, episode 395. I'm here. I feel good. Well, I'm a little hot. My skin's a little hot because I am doing some tattoo removal. Shout out to Removery for removing all of my tattoos. Well, not all of them, but it feels like all of them. It might as well be all of them because it's literally in every area of my body. Like, I didn't just get tattoos on my arms. Luckily, there aren't any on my legs, but I had to just throw them everywhere on my body. It's like my 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 arms, my side, my abdomen, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. That's where all my tattoos are. So I'm getting removal from Removery. Shout out to Dustin at Removery and Carmen. You guys are helping me deal with my regerts. Nothing wrong with some regerts in life, everybody. There's nothing wrong with feeling like, hey, I would have done that differently. Those decisions I made, they don't suit my life right now. People are always like, oh, I have no regrets. Really? Not one regret? Not even the haircut? Not even all those people you dated? Really? The outfits? The eyebrows? Let's talk about the eyebrows. I regret the eyebrows in the 90s for sure. Now I've got to have a lady draw new ones on every few months. Yeah, I have regrets. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that. I don't trust people who don't have regrets. Some of you gave birth to regrets. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. But let's be honest. I know my mom probably felt that way a few times. I miss her. I love you, mom. I just think that it's okay to admit that you've had some choices in the past or made some choices in the past that today you wouldn't necessarily make. And so some of those choices for me are in the... the tattoo space and I am removing them and boy is it painful I've never given birth but it feels like I'm giving birth through my pores it's this laser and it just the sound is like the sound of the laser literally sounds like it's saying regret over and over and over and it should be painful I think admitting that you made a choice that wasn't good for you and you're going through that process should be painful. That's where you learn and grow. So as I'm getting this laser blasted into my skin, it's, it's making me think next time I'm going to make a decision a little bit more thoroughly. Next time I'm going to rethink and maybe think more and take my time. You know, some of those people take forever to make a decision. Yeah. Maybe they have less regrets and fewer regrets because they take a while. And I do take a while with certain decisions in my life, but when it comes to t- <laughs> tattoos, I'll like just put it on. It's so painful. Oh, yeah. A per- permanent ink? Okay, go ahead. Put it in there. But there is something beautiful to that careless rebellion of the youth and in, in, in living by the seat or seam of your pants. I don't know which one it is. I think it's the seam. The seam of your pants makes sense because there's pant seams and maybe they unravel. But seat of your pant sounds right as well. So I don't know which one it is. Deb's looking it up right now. There is something beautiful to, to living from that space. And there's an era in your life where you can live from that space. But when you get a little bit older and you get a little bit more set in your ways, it's okay to sit down and go, ah, maybe... I could have thought that one out a little bit more. Maybe I could have sat on the seat of my pants for a few more minutes on that one. So I I think that me getting this tattoo removal is a sign that I'm maturing, which I can't stand when people say it that way. Mature. You're so mature. Am I? What did you just say to me? Did you just call me? Did you say manure? Is it seam or seat? Mixed signals. Deb's see, it's both. That's probably why I was confused. Yeah, it's seat or seat. It can be seam or seat. So, however, however you guys lived, and if you have lived it from that space, enjoy it. Hold for airplane. Enjoy it because it's a part of your life. These are. I don't know if you guys can hear this. We'll have to find out and post. But there's these. We live just north of San Diego where there are military uh, ospreys that go by quite often and they're kind of a cool intimidating helicopter it's like basically a a helicopter that's listened to a bunch of Joe Rogan episodes Mm. so it's Tuesday 
God, the birds sound amazing. This doesn't even sound real. I wish you guys could hear this. Does this sound like a Disney track? It sounds gorgeous out there. I don't know how you guys spent your Sunday morning, but I spent my Sunday Sunday morning in a porta potty in a farmer's market, and it almost tipped over. So how was your Sunday? I got in this rickety ass porta potty, and I did not trust whoever placed it there. You know your day isn't good when you literally start off in a crappy place, and I was concerned because I got in there. And it felt like I was on one of those BOSU balls, like those exercise balls. You flip them upside down and then you're kind of balancing on the ball part. That's what it felt like when I got into the porta potty. And it was like almost like a, se- a teeter totter, teeter sodder, cedar. S- <laughs> oh no, cedar Sinai. I would have needed to go to cedar Sinai. But it felt like a, like a seesaw. I got in and I stepped on one side and then it kind of went the other way. And then I was like, hey, hello. <laughs> I wish there could have been a video camera. Actually, I really thought I was getting punked. I'm like, I swear to God, if somebody flips me over inside of this freaking porta potty, I'm going to be pissed. You know, it's my fault that I had to go there and pay $40 for a rape of sandwiches. I only go for these sandwiches. Side note, I, I really think that somebody should open a rape a stand after someone gets a raped. Aren't you hungry? We're both hungry. Let's be honest. It's a brutal event. We're both going to be hungry. Why not have a post attack snack. Let's break bread to, together. Let's figure this situation out. That's just a little business idea that I have. Jesse Mays rape a rape a stand. The s- the snack after the attack, the post attack <laughs> snack. Oh no. <laughs> That's horrible, but also hello sharks. I'm coming today to offer you $200,000 for 4% stake in my new business, the rape a rape stand. Everyone needs a snack after attack. It's the after attack snack shack. Buy your rape today. 10% of the proceeds will go towards rape victims. Rape isn't funny, but I really think that this a rape stand is one of the most delicious places I have ever encountered. It's literally called the a rape stand in Los Angeles, California. I get the West Cider. It's the chicken sandwich and it is loaded with meats and cheeses. It's it's so delicious. There's cilantro, there's shredded cheese, there's avocado chicken salad. Do you even know what that is? Have you even heard of that in your life? I go just for this freaking sandwich. I will stand in line at the freaking farmer's market for this $20 arepa sandwich. And let me tell you, it arepas my taste buds. It gets right in there and just attacks my taste buds. It's so delicious. I, I look forward to it every time I'm in town and I can get over there. It's the Mar Vista supermarket. Well, flea, flea market. No, farmer's market. It's one of those markets. <laughs> they probably have stands at all those places. But you go to the Mar Vista farmer's market on a Sunday in Los Angeles. Thank me later. I normally don't like to blast my my personal life and what I enjoy to do. But th- this is business just needs to be promoted. It's so good. The $20 sandwiches are ridiculously priced, but it, it's a whole lot of sandwich. And it was a good treat after almost dying inside of that porta potty. I have to be honest. I was really humbled. I started off my Sunday very humble and grateful. The trip to the farmer's market made me so humble and grateful. As I was sitting down, shoving a portion of the arepa into my mouth, I actually, that's a lie because I got a snack to wait. I don't know if you guys are like me. If you get food, you need food before you get the food. If I'm waiting for food, I need wait food. That's just the way it is. That's a rule. That's a farmer's market rule. You go over here, you order a sandwich, you walk over here and you you get the the dumplings to eat while the sandwich is getting made. So I had these dumplings. I don't know the name of the stand because I only had it a couple times and I wasn't sure I could actually promote it confidently, but it is quite delicious. I'd have to try it again to make sure to see if it's consistent. That's why I promote the Arepa sandwich because it's very consistent. But as I'm over here sitting down, eating my pre-meal meal, These two fellas, these two happy looking, I don't know, 20 something year old fellas. Well, actually, this one guy is standing in line with his girlfriend and he only had one leg and he had a prosthetic from his hip to his foot, like a full leg prosthetic. And his other leg was very muscular, like he was in in extremely good shape, but he had this entire prosthetic that was his his whole leg. And I, I haven't seen that a lot. You know, usually... If that is something that somebody has, you're not going to really notice it if you're in an inclement, uh, a place with inclement weather because they're going to be wearing pants all the time. But out here in California, 
you see those things a little bit more prevalently. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word. If people have them, you can notice them more because the weather tends to be a little bit warmer here. So people are in shorts. So this guy had shorts on and it just took, it took me aback because I, I don't think I've ever seen a whole hip, a whole leg, a whole prosthetic leg. And also his disposition was so cheerful and he seemed so happy. He was with this cute girl and they were hanging out and then his friend comes over and his friend's got the same leg. His friend has the same leg. And it, it, here I am sh just shoveling dumplings into my face. And there, here are these men without legs. And it made me appreciate what I have. But I don't like when people... <laughs> Debbie's laughing at me. I don't like when people, like, say, you know, oh, I'm so lucky I have this. I, I'm so lucky I have that. When they see someone who has less. Because I look at these guys and they don't appear to have less. In their spirit, they don't look like they have less. You know, and people usually express the gratitude for like their family, their job, health. You have to be more specific about what you're grateful for. I'm grateful for my legs. I'm grateful I have legs. Without these babies getting around, it's a little bit more difficult. I don't know that I'd be able to have the disposition these fellas had. And it made me think about their legs. It made me wonder, well, they're so adaptive and adapted. I wonder if they had an accident, they must be really strong because they've adapted to this life and they've just accepted their new world and their new life as is. That was one possibility in my mind. And my other thought was maybe they were born this way and they don't think of it as having less. It's what they have. And maybe in each one of those possibilities, I'm sure there could be other possibilities, but those are the two things that came up for me as I was looking at them. Maybe in those possibilities, there's peace in both of it for them. And it made me realize that it's interesting when you talk about gratitude, it's, it's important to know and understand where you're starting from. Because I don't think, this is my thought, I don't think when you look at someone who has, I guess you want to say a disability, although these guys didn't give me disability energy, they're obviously more challenged because they have devices that they have to rely on and these devices can break down and they don't have the freedom or, or flow of two legs that work together. So they're disabled in that sense, but their spirits certainly aren't disabled. And I think you should be able to be grateful for something in life without having to see somebody who you think has less than you. And that's why gratitude is such a important practice. You have to practice it daily and find something to be grateful for daily. But it did make me grateful that I had both legs. I have to be honest. I went home and I hugged my legs. I just was like rocking. I was like, thank you for being here. I'm so thankful that you show up every day and do your job. Um, I'm glad that I don't need a contraption or like one of those bedpan swings to get out of bed. Perspective is everything. That's the point. And just having a little bit of gratitude without having to see people and be like, I'm glad I'm not them. I bet these two one leg wonders look at people with two legs and go, these people don't know how good they don't know how good they have it. I'm glad I'm not them. And that was just an interesting, very interesting perspective. Um, speaking of new perspectives, I got a reality check with or from my niece and nephew. I got a new perspective after my niece and nephew gave me a guilt trip in the form of a FaceTime video. These little rat bastards, these little manipulative rat bastards. They're so cute and I miss them every day and they drive me nuts. They called me at 4.30, I don't even know what the time it was, like 5.30 a.m. my time. With, like I said, if you watch and listen to the podcast regularly, meth head energy sharp, ready to go. These kids wake up and all cylinders are going. And we're not talking about these new three cylinder vehicles. No, none of these sissy rides, none of these sissy mobiles, none of these pansy, pansy automotives. No, we're talking about Ford tough, gas guzzling, ozone burning, grrr, six cylinder Caprice classic energy. They come raring like that. And they also have the same amount of exhaust. So they leave me a message asking where I am from, where am I, how come I'm not answering the phone because it's 530. I need my chakra cleansing before I talk to you. I have to Palo Santo my soul before I can have a conversation. And then I get another message. 
Oh God, was that a bug? <sighs> I just felt a weird sensation on my wrist. I get another message from Karina and it is the saddest thing I have ever heard in my freaking life. She is just looks so sad. Why are you answering? And she's like, Aunt Jess, why aren't you why don't you answer me anymore? You're annoying. You're so annoying. She's legitimately sad that I didn't answer the phone. She was actually let down that I didn't answer. Now there's a reason. Besides the fact that it's 5.30 in the morning, I always have my phone on Do Not Disturb. Always, always, always. And there's a benefit and um, a challenge to that. I think it's important for us to put our lives on Do Not Disturb sometimes. I think you need that setting in your life. You should treat your life like your cell phone. If you're able to put your cell phone down, you got to be able to put situations and responsibilities in your life down sometimes as well. Not, maybe not children because that's probably neglect and illegal in most states. But I think that the do not disturb is an important feature on a cell phone. But the downfall and the challenge of that is I miss messages. I miss text messages. I don't get everything. But weren't we fine before we were reached by everybody? Weren't we okay? I feel like we were so much better. The power of being unreached? Hey, guess what? I'm busy. Are you six years old? Well, I'm busy years old. I'm sleeping. But no, actually, I really did feel bad. But it was because I, you know, I have too many notifications, so I shut them all off. But it made me realize, this is the new perspective it gave me, that I needed to prioritize and figure out how to give access to specific people so they can get to me. I do think, you know, these kids are so young and they're going to grow up and they're going to be teenagers and they're going to be doing drugs and getting lost in all types of holes. I, I want to be in there before they get lost to the world and, and their youth turns into adolescence and, and they become young adults. So I feel like they need to have an open line to me. So it gave me a new perspective. I was like, you know what? They should be able to get a hold of me whenever they want and call me whenever they want. I want to be a place of continuity for them and a place where they can count on me outside of their parents. They need to know that they can trust other adults besides their parents just because of this little demon calling me at 5 a.m. with a guilt trip that really worked because I bet it was an acting class that she took and she just worked it on me in a form of a FaceTime video. And my soul was completely bare. I cried a little because of how exposed she left herself she was so sad <laughs> I felt I really felt bad I sent it back to my sister and I, I couldn't hear Karina's message by herself I couldn't hear it. it was so low so I had to like listen to it again and after I listened to it, it was after I had sent it to my sister and I was like oh man that little bitch misses me she better she better remember I'm the fun one I'm the fun aunt I had some other interesting things happen I I have a bunch of house plants I don't know if this is gonna be interesting to you guys but we're gonna talk about house plants because I'm 41 staring 42 in the back of the head and I have no children so I have dogs and house plants and my plants are always healthy but I noticed in areas where their growth was blocked their leaves stems buds what have you by a wall or a taped leaf I have some leaves that I taped to these little things I got from a website, these like little leaf applications that you could adhere to the wall so that your plant can vine up the wall. Places where they're connected there or, you know, part of the plant is blocked by the corner of a wall or whatever. The plant was starting to die in those areas. It was, it stopped growing and the, the growth was stunted or there was death starting to grow on the, on the leaf and the leaf was starting to die. And it really, I had this moment, it really made me think about my growth and about people's growth in general. When we have these blocks, when we are up against a wall where we need more space to grow, if we don't give ourselves that space, we start to die in different ways. We start to, we start to, to retract and decay sets in in some way, shape or form. And it made me realize areas where I need a little bit more room. I might need to stretch out a bit. I might need to challenge myself. That's another thing. It's like these these plants are pushed up against the wall. You'd think like they would figure out and adapt and maybe turn a corner. And some of them do, but not all of them do. Not all of them are able to overcome 
the thing that's blocking them because the thing that's blocking them becomes bigger than their desire to grow. And it just made me really reflective about myself and areas where I feel stunted or areas where I'm stuck and realizing I might need some more space. I think people just might need to give me a bigger pot, put me in a bigger pot so I can stretch out. And then I found this clip from, I, I think it was, um, what was that show, Boy, Boy Meets World with Fred Savage? There was this clip because he used to go, Fred Savage used to go and talk to his neighbor in the backyard. There was always something meaningful that happened at the, at the fence in between their two yards. And on this particular episode, they had this conversation about growth and why he moved the plant. And it was so funny because I saw it right after I had that thought. It came up right after I had that thought about being stuck and how that can sort of impede your growth. And for me, it definitely has. And it also made me really miss that show. Boy Meets World was a great show. And I was always envious of Topanga's boobs. She had a great set. And that's probably sexist. I don't know if women can be sexist against women, but it's a compliment. Take it. Take it while you can. Um, there's a couple other things. I want to talk about before we get into that, I want to do some Maybay mail. If you guys want to email me to have your mail read on the podcast, you can DM me on Instagram. You can also email me directly at jessiemaypelusocomedy at gmail.com and I'll read it on the podcast and you can just let me know if you want your name omitted and kept anonymous. We can do that. This fella DM'd me. He says, hey, Jesse May. He gave me okay to talk about this on his on my podcast and his name's Patrick he says hey Jesse May I remember being all fucked up in the ICU after surgery when I was in in it deep with cancer I spent a month in ICU and had to do about 19 rounds of chemotherapy afterwards lol I sent you a message when I was listening to your podcast lit on painkillers <laughs> watched your live cast while getting high with you on the THC Got the news last week that I'm 100% cancer-free and one year in remission. Big fan from Montreal. You're my favorite com comic, and it was fun tuning in and tuning out of reality when watching you live and listening to your pods. Keep on. And I'm so happy for him. He even showed me his, his remission report and how clear he is. It, uh, very trustworthy. He's sending me do medical documents. Already, you know, there, there's mutual appreciation for each other. So, Patrick, I told you I was going to shout you out on the podcast. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy that my podcast isn't causing cancer, first and foremost. I'm glad that you are in remission and enjoy that. Enjoy that clarity and however you're feeling right now. And I'm, I'm so grateful that whatever I talk about and the ridiculousness that I put out there has brought you joy and has allowed you to escape what seems like was a very challenging time for you. So thank you, Patrick, for that message. And I'm so glad you're still with us. Keep on keeping on, buddy. Stay playful. I Speaking of playful, uh, I thought this stuff was ridiculous. I was, you know, had a little joint and walked around my neighborhood like a lady and realized there's a lot of signs out in the world. So I wanted to start a little something fun called I Saw the Signs, which is a homage to Ace of Base. I saw the sign. And I'm hoping that I can just get that Ace of Base soundbite without getting pinged by the freaking copyright crew. I want to be able to put, I saw the sign right before I do these pictures. Now, obviously this is going to be a little bit more beneficial for the people who watch the pod. Go to the YouTube page. If you want to watch the pod, it's youtube.com forward slash Jesse May Peluso. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to rate this podcast five stars. Do you think I forgot? No, I just put it deeper into the podcast. So I trick you. So I trick you. Imagine Ace of Bass singing, I saw the sign. There was a missing cat named Cujo and uh, a, f a phone call and a, a, a cell phone for you to call. And it made me really sad because this cat looked really, really sweet. And then I thought of the movie Cujo and I thought, who's going to want to return a cat called Cujo? Because what if the cat is like the dog Cujo? It's probably not a good name. I probably would have changed the name for the wanted poster. I'm not going to return a cat named Cujo. I'm going to be concerned that that cat is going to attack me. First of all, cats don't like people. They only like people that they can control. And uh, that's why I'm a dog person. I'm not going to be controlled by a cat. I'm not going to have my whole existence controlled. And then what? You're going to just emotionally abandon me because you're too cool for me. Cats are just too cool. 
So that's why I'm a dog person. And then when I saw this missing poster for Cujo, I thought, you got to change the name. And then I saw this other poster, Lost Bird. What? How? First of all, I, I don't know if you can catch a bird. I don't know if you can get a bird back. What kind of bird? A cockatiel gray, white, and yellow. I, I don't think that that, that that bird's coming back. It might respond to a wolf whistle. I'm sorry. Did you release some sort of Middle Earth bird into the atmosphere? What the fuck is a wolf whistle? I just thought somebody was messing with me on my walk when I was walking around. I hope that people find the bird, but I don't know if you can find a bird in the air. Let's be real. When you're out in the world and you lose a cat or a dog, there's a chance you might get it back. A slim chance you might get it back. Whenever I see a, a poster for a missing cat, I just assume the cat left. <laughs> I just assume that the cat was like, screw this. I'm out. Cats are so self-reliant. You know, I just assume that the cat is, it, it packed its bags. It's not missing. It left. But a lost bird? Uh, they can fly. You can't. That's like saying... That's like putting a lost fish sign near the ocean. It responds to a, a d dolphin whistle. You might get it back, actually. A fish might be, you, might, you might get a better fish. You're not getting your cat back. The cat's not coming back. It became a snack or it's living a better life. Not in this town. There's too many street walkers. There's too many coyotes. There's too many creepy crawlers. Op opossum, I believe people call them. There's also those, uh, what are those other things? Raccoons. There's wild raccoons. But a, a person who thinks, this might be Dana. <laughs> this might be Dana. I wish I had the number to call these people because I would ask if they got their bird back. And then it, I walked a little further and I just saw a little swath of hair. Swatch? Swath? I believe that's what it is. Just a curl of a hair. And that really s unnerved me. There's something about finding a whole weave in a street. Uh, that would happen often when I was in New York City. I would just find a whole weave lying there. And you never thought twice about it. You're like, oh, some, some girl, she had to go fast. And so, uh, the weave got caught in something. Or a couple girls got into a fight. There's always some legitimate reason as to why you'd find an entire weave on the street in New York City. Not just a piece of hair. A piece of hair feels a little more intentional. A piece of hair feels a little more psychotic. It feels like evidence. And it also feels a little creepy, like it's a sign or an omen. And there's always something I find in these streets on, on the walks that I have around my neighborhood. That's why I was like, I need to start taking pictures of this stuff. Because there was a bra hung on a, a cactus a couple weeks back. And that freaked me out. Especially because I think it was the day after Valentine's Day. And I just thought, ruh -roh, I uh, hope this evening didn't end bad for whoever had that bra on. And now I'm finding little pieces of hair. I think I need to move. If people are losing birds and hair in my neighborhood, I got to go. It's a sign of the times. It's time to, like, pack this puppy up. Speaking of that, here's a non sequitur segue. We're doing a little overheard. We've got a new overheard this week from Mongoose Adventures up in the DMs on my Instagram. Overheard is a little segment we do. One sentence if it's one person. Two sentences if it's two people. It has to be completely unrelated to a conversation you're having, having, and it has to be out in the world, unrelated to whatever you're doing. A complete non sequitur part of your day. You just happen to hear something as you're walking by a group of people or someone in the grocery store. Keep your ears open. And you can either DM them to me, email them to me, as well as the, those emails we mentioned before, Jesse May Peluso Comedy at Gmail. Overheard from Mongoose Adventures. Overheard this part of a conversation and had to listen to the rest for clarification. I will just watch you two do it. Now, that could be a lot of different things. In L.A., I think of the porn industry, and it makes me sad. And then I think about, I don't know, maybe a contractor trying to learn something new because there goes, it's, you know, I, my pendulum either swings completely negative or completely positive. It's either somebody learning something new or uh, something horrific happening to someone. But in this instance, Mongoose Adventures said they were talking about running a marathon. I wholeheartedly agree. 
I'm going to watch you two do it. I don't need to run a marathon. When I was in Austin, these people were running a marathon. It makes me think of this time when I lived in bed Brooklyn. Shout out to bed do or die. I was on Madison Ave, which I used to tell my parents so they'd think I was on the Madison Ave in Manhattan. Nope. bed Brooklyn in between the J and Z train. Hello. Protect your neck. Watch your six. The streets are alive. I was in Boogie Woogie Brooklyn and... I heard, um, as I was jogging, I was, I, I went for a jog in my neighborhood and as a, you know, white chick in a predominantly black neighborhood, it doesn't really look like you're jogging as much as it looks like you're running from someone. And I was jogging down the street and I heard from someone's brownstone, I couldn't see anybody as I was jogging, I heard, what you running from snowflake? Just from someone's bedroom window. Hey, Snowflake, what you running from? And I, I never will ever forget that in my life. And when I read this overheard, it made me think of that moment. And he was right. What was I running from? And that's what I think about people who run marathons. Oh, I like the challenge. I really like the challenge. Oh, my God, you're a nerd. I mean, work on yourself, but you're a nerd. A whole marathon? Oh, just people need to, I guess people constantly, constantly need a mountain. People really need a mountain. And you know what? The, the one thing a marathon probably represents for people who can't and don't struggle naturally is struggle. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of hate mail. But it seems like people who run marathons don't have a lot of struggle in their life. But then again, you see those people who run marathons with one leg. But then again, is that a struggle they have? Or are you the one struggling because you can't imagine your life with what you think they're lacking? That's a mind trip. I just, I just blew my own mind. I don't even know if what I said made sense. It sounded like it made sense coming out of my mouth. But I feel like people who run marathons, I think, what are you running from? And maybe people are running from things. Maybe people are running from so much. Maybe running a marathon, you feel like you're dealing with the real problems in your life by just running. It's like Forrest Gump. I think Forrest Gump started that run after Jenny died. Or maybe Jenny turned him down. I can't remember why Forrest started running. But one day he just was done running. But you have to wonder, like, are these people running to something? Are they running away from something? Because it's a lot of miles to run. And, and some of these people just whip it out like it's nothing. They whip out a marathon and, and they're cool. If I did a marathon, my I would lose my my nipples would fall off. I hear that that happens. Well, actually, it's, it's more like a, a rash you get on your nipple from your shirt rubbing. I don't know why people aren't wearing sports bras, but I think you still get nipple rash with your sports bra. Some people lose toenails because they run so much. My sister, a couple of her toenails popped off and she just did a mountain goat run. I, th I think that's like a six mile r jog. D did you find the Forrest Gump thing? <laughs> when did Forrest, did, what happened? There's no reason? He just started running. I thought Jenny died, but I feel like she died more towards the end. Yeah, they were older. He just started running. I feel like I won't be able to get it because of the, the Wi-Fi. Um, something happened in that movie and he started to run. I don't know what it was. Let me see your phone. Let's see. I feel like, what was the plot? Oh, God, is this a spider? Forrest Gump um, describes how when his lifelong Jenny left him overnight, he decides the next morning to start running for no particular reason at all. So it's not no particular reason. He decided to start running because Jenny left him. And that's what I think about a lot of these people who run marathons. They're running because of something else. And so it's interesting. I guess a marathon is a great way to run away from one problem towards another. <laughs> Hey, do you have problems? That's what marathons commercials should be. Hey, do you have a problem that just happened? Start running with us. We'll get you away from run one problem and towards another one. So yeah, I just think that a marathon's a great way to run away from one problem towards another. And a lot of us are running from problems. I know sometimes I run from mine, but it's like everything in life. If you face it head on, it's a little bit more difficult. It hurts more. You might have more tension and more 
challenge and feel like you're doing it wrong, but I guarantee you when you're going towards it, when you're right in the middle of it, when you just face it and deal with it, make a marathon of it, you're going to be able to be so much stronger on the other side and you're going to be able to feel like you accomplished something. So I don't know whether you guys are running from a problem or in the middle of a problem. Maybe you're carefree right now, but whatever it is, I hope you're able to find some sort of marathon to get you to and fro from one place to another. Find a, a passageway, a pathway between your problems. And a marathon, I guess, as I'm making fun of it, it's a healthier approach than binge drinking. Sure, you might write the novel of your life on a bottle of bourbon, but you might die as well. So no offense to those people who run and run marathons. Just quit bragging about it. Just do it. Just like Nike said, just do it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. And I hope that this podcast helps you guys get from wherever you're going to the next stop. If you're listening to me in the car, maybe you're at your night shift. I know a lot of you have overnight shifts. Whatever the situation is, I hope this was some sort of marathon for you, getting you to and fro in your life. And don't forget to give us an email if you guys have any questions or if you want to be a part of the podcast. You can also call us, 513-916-0930. Leave us a message or email us, jessiemaypelusocomedy at gmail.com. And get out there. Run that marathon. Run that marathon of life, folks. 